happy hump day. Oh, baby, the work week's on halfway gone, and today we have hot takes incoming about John Woo. Don't go anywhere. You do not want to miss this. We'll be right back. Previously on the Nerdy Ronin Network. Did nobody watch it and go, oh, oh. Happy, happy hump day. That's right, it's Wednesday, and boy, do we have something to talk about today. <laughs> oh, oh, my friends. Oh. Mm, sorry, I just had to have some of that blackout coffee. Mm, blackout coffee company, fantastic coffee company, great prices. Down below, we got promo codes. Save some of your hard-earned money. They don't pay me. It's just great, great coffee. So be sure to check them out. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. We appreciate each and every one of you. New subscribers, old subscribers. We love you all. So, oh, my friends. Have you ever heard of this movie? Let's just get right into it. The Killer by John Woo. Uh, that's right. This movie is a classic, uh, it, it really, John Woo really brought in the idea of gun fu, uh, the way he shot his movies, the gun battles, the fights, it was just really unique and really fun to watch, all right, let's take a look at it real quick, this is important, all right, 1989, rated R, hour and 51 minutes, a disillusioned assassin accepts one last hit before he leaves the game forever in hopes of using his earnings to restore the vision of a singer that he accidentally blinded. All right. Directed by John Woo. Written by John Woo. Now, I'm going to scroll down here so you can see this. He's directed by John Woo. Written by John Woo. There's no other name. Am I blind? I mean, I am blind. But as you can see, John Woo... Wrote this movie all by himself. All by himself, my friends. And stars the wonderful Chow Yun Fat, Danny Lee, Sally Ye. Oh, my friends. This movie is a classic. I mean, it is a cult classic. It is beloved by action movie lovers. It is some of the best. Hong Kong cinema, if you will. Like, bar none. Like, it's the gold star standard that people use when talking about action movies. John Woo is the gold standard. Now, he did come to America and make a few movies here, and they didn't go over well because people here don't understand cinematic difference or differences, right? Uh, Mission Impossible 2, he did that one. Great movie. Now, he did also do some movies that did well, like Face Off. Um... <clears throat> Overall, I have enjoyed every single one of his American movies in the past. Uh, but then the last couple of years, he did Silent Night, an American-made movie where the main character does not speak for the whole movie. Like one line at the beginning, and then for the rest of the movie, he's, his vocal cords are damaged, so he does not have any lines spoken for the rest, and it was brilliant, it was fantastic, it, it was a delightful movie, uh, hardcore for sure, well, I'm going to make a guess and say that John Woo, now in his very old age, has decided he, he either is out of money or needs some extra money, and Hollywood came a-knocking, specifically Peacock, <laughs> Now, let's let's be honest here. Peacock has some good stuff on it and has some bad stuff on it. It's a streaming service, right? But if if evidently they went to John Woo and they were like, "Hey, we would like for you to redo one of your most like l beloved movies for today's audience." And he was like, Okay, I can do that, sure. And they're like, oh, by the way, 
we want you to work with two more writers to make this movie, one of whom has some good movies in his stable of back history, and one not so much. His big claim to fame was he was an editor, and then he wrote 10 Cloverfield Lane. Will you work with him? Sure. If there's enough zeros, I'm assuming. Let's take a look here. <laughs> the Killer, 2024, rated R, 2 hours and 6 minutes. An assassin tries to make amends in an effort to restore the sight of a beautiful young singer. Yes. Kind of not true at all. Because in this book, we'll get into it. Directed by John Woo, written by John Woo. Brian Hegland, who has written some good things, and Josh Campbell, who has claimed to fame as he's an editor. He has edited a bunch of stuff and wrote Tim Clover Cloverfield Lane. And since then, he's written a bunch of stuff that's mediocre at best. So, weird. Glad they put him on the project. Uh, starring Natalie Emmanuel and Omar Sy and Sam Worthington. Now, I like Sam Worthington. I like him a lot. He's a good actor underutilized a lot. There's you a picture of this right here is the killer. And this is the police officer. This all takes place in France. And that's a picture of dear old John Wu, who has gotten quite old. Unfortunately, we, we all get old at some point. All right. So let's talk about this because I was, Somewhat excited to see that John Woo was redoing a classic. And then as the news progressed and you see the characters and then you see the trailers. And I was pretty certain this was not going to be. Um, it was going to be substandard was my thoughts going into it. But I gave it a shot nonetheless. <sighs> Out of 100, I would give this movie a 15 because John Woo directed it and the cinematography in some places are prime John Woo. In other places, it's not at all. <clears throat> and that's as high as I'm willing to go here. This is a spectacle and what not to do if you have brilliance from their past and somebody says, hey, you want to redo that? The check wasn't, wasn't big enough for whatever they paid dear John Woo to do this. And I don't know how much he actually had a hand in. Uh, obviously, right? Like, I, I'm going to hope that he had a big hand in it, but then I also want to think, like, Maybe he didn't have that big a hand in it and he just did a few shots and then the assistant director or whatever did the rest of it because the action scenes in this don't even compare to old school John Woo. They don't even compare to the movie from two years ago, Silent Night. The action scenes in this are mediocre and that's being nice. The storyline is... For something that I love from the past, the storyline in this is less than mediocre because they've changed key parts that are integral to the story. And on top of that, Natalie Emmanuel is about as unlikable a person, like the only person I can think of that's more unlikable at the moment is Aquafina. She doesn't she doesn't come across as a a good character, Chow Yun Fat, in the original, in, in any movie he did, he just has a presence, right, that, that just stands out, and he's a brilliant actor, and he portrays so much emotion, and this girl does not, just to put it mild. Does this have the basic structure of the original movie? Kind of. 
And by that, I mean it has an assassin. It has a police officer that's hunting said assassin. And it has a blind girl. Yep. That's what it has to do with in regards to the original. Everything else they've changed. On some level. And I'm not even going to say that this girl's not believable as an assassin. I mean, how hard is it to play an assassin, right? But she is grating. And doesn't have the range to pull in the emotion that Chow Yun-Fat had working with John Woo in the original back in 89. Um, Omar Sy does a good job as a cop. Not because he's a man. He just happens to pull off a French cop really well. This isn't even really an American movie. I would surmise this is a, a French movie done in English, right? whole thing takes place in France. Or Paris, whatever. The characters just aren't believable. As far as the assassin's concerned. The blind girl, and she's not trying... And this is my issue um, with the restore the sight of a beautiful young singer in the synopsis. That's not true. At no point is the assassin trying to restore her sight. In this movie, the assassin is trying to save the blind singer from her bosses who want her to kill her. Sam Worthington and several other people play the bad guys here. I mean, structurally, like her bosses that have her do hits and whatnot. And... That whole thing takes up, those guys take up way too much space in this movie. The sad story about her bosses. They overcomplicated it. Don't know who had a hand in writing that, but you suck. All right. <clears throat> because the story should be about the assassin trying to help the blind singer. Period. Point blank. And the battle that they are having with the cops and her bosses period point blank the original movie was a simple story it was not overly complicated it's a story where in the end enemy of my friend is my friend okay because the killer the assassin ends up having to work with the cop against the bad guys right and if you've never seen the original The Killer, I would ask you, if you've seen this movie, the remake, go watch the original. The ending's a bit different. The story, a bit different. The action, way better. There are minor implications in this movie, the remake, that the girl boss, the assassin, is way better than the cop, the man, and they show it. There is some messaging. There is a little bit of messaging in this, and in some of the scenes, the man does a horrible job where the assassin, she did it perfectly because, well, she's a girl. Oh, you know, she's a girl. And from watching... John Woo's back catalog, he doesn't put that stuff in his movies. So, Josh Campbell, I'm calling you out because I'm certain you're the one because Brian Hegland generally writes well-written stories. All right? I'm going to bring it up here. I want to look at Brian Hegland's history here because from what I can remember, yeah, A Knight's Tale, Legend, um, let's look at his writing here. Spencer Confidential. He did a good job with that movie. It wasn't Spencer, but it was a good job. Robin Hood. The Taking of Phelan 123. Man on Fire. He wrote the screenplay for Man on Fire. Mystic River. Payback. A Knight's Tale. L.A. Confidential. Assassins. 
What? What? Peacock. What? Why did you put Josh Campbell with in this writing room? If you would have put John Wu and Brian Heglin together and had them rewrite The Killer, I have to believe it would have been a different movie. And way better. Because they both have done really well in their career of writing solid stories. So I'm going to have to believe that Josh Campbell was shoehorned in there to add a little messaging to make it work out. And it ruins this movie. One of the three ruined the writing. The dialogue is bad. It's just not good. The action is mediocre. The story has been changed for today. Poorly. It makes me sad to say this, but I'm going to say this. This is the worst John Woo movie I've ever seen. And I don't believe this is a John Woo movie. I believe they gave him a paycheck so they could put his name on it and use his material to get eyeballs on it. But that's it. Sadly. And if I'm John Woo, look, I can't blame John Woo for that. If I'm John Woo and somebody offers me a big paycheck to use my source material and my name, what do I care? Because the fans of John Woo will see it and immediately be like, that's not John Woo. And they will go back to watching the classic John Woo, the the good movie. (laughs) This is a fail, Peacock. Holly Weird. Great job. Rapping on a master director and writer and storyteller. Oh, have you seen this movie? What do you think? Did you like it? Is it something you can sit down and say, that was a really well done movie? (laughs) Ah, No, you can't. All right. I'm getting out of here. I'm just getting more angry. Sad, sad day for John Woo fans. Oh my goodness. Have you seen both? Let me know in the comments down below. Tell me which one you like the best. All right. We will be back on Friday to talk about movies. <laughs> for Michael, the microphone, Bob, squeaky chair in the back, and this big fat, fat nerd. <laughs> We'll see you then.